There's a really spooky, scary reason why this person does not allow dolls in their house. We also have stories today about ghost people and ghost cats and all kinds of other weird stuff. Sit back, grab a snack, and let's get weird. Hi, Into Matrix. Hi. I love to watch you, and I thought I'd share some experiences with you as well. Oh, I'm excited. I'm a single mother living in one of the original condominiums in a small town. These condominiums were built as two-story buildings with two separate apartments on each level. Although they are technically apartments, they were originally referred to as condominiums. As a cautious parent, I always reminded my nine-year-old son to be mindful of the noise and our neighbors below us. The walls in these old buildings are quite thin, so it's important to us to be considerate. On this particular night, it was a school night, and my son went to bed around 8 o'clock p.m. By 8.30 p.m., I was in bed, unwinding from the day. My bed was facing the hallway, and my son's room was right next to mine, sharing a wall. After putting my son to bed, taking a shower, and lying in bed for over an hour, I started scrolling through TikTok completely engrossed. Obviously, that happens to all of us. Suddenly, I heard giggles and rumbling coming from the front room. I immediately yelled out to my son, telling him to go to bed. That's exactly what I thought would have been happening. However, I could still hear him running back and forth. He often liked to hide and try to scare me, but I was not amused that night considering it was late and he had school the next morning. I leaned out of my bed and peered into the hallway, intending to tell him in a firmer tone to go to bed. But when I looked, I saw his silhouette leaning into the hallway. As soon as I saw him, he quickly bounced back and I heard him hiding. I don't think that's your son, man. <laughs> Frustrated, I got out of bed and walked into the front room only to find that he wasn't there. There were only three places he could have gone, outside, the coat closet, or the hallway where I was. I checked the coat closet, but he wasn't there. The front door was locked, so I opened it and checked outside, but there was no sign of him. Finally, I went to his room and found him sound asleep in his bed, snoring. He was not faking it then if he was snoring. I didn't acknowledge what I had witnessed and simply went back to bed, eventually drifting off to sleep. How? Thankfully, I haven't experienced anything like that since. However, I find it interesting that the figure I saw had the same height, funny personality, and everything that resembled my son. As a single parent, I just can't move out, so I hope that that was my last strange experience. But then, more to come. More to come! You need to share them more with us. Wait, do you guys think if it was the same height, personality, and everything resembled your son, do you think he was like astral projecting? Maybe that was his astral projection. If it resembled the son, that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to go, he was astral projecting and he has no idea what he's doing. I know we're all fiending for the more to come stories, but don't worry, I have more for you. Let's do another one. In my culture, we have little people and spirits that talk to young children and animals. American Indian Millie Lacks Band of Ojibwe Central Minnesota. I don't know if I said that right. I apologize or if you guys know what that is. Trigger warning, death of a child and doctor and her puppy. They all died or what? Let's see. I live in the Millie Lacks Reservation in Central Minnesota. While growing up, we were told not to play outside at night because something is out there and may take you away. Fast forward to today. We have a homeless shelter on Main Highway through our reservation. One evening, a young woman was packing up to move to another place. She went outside to take out the garbage, leaving her five-year-old daughter alone in the room. She has done so before, and the child has never followed her, nor has she ever left the room without her mom. At some point, the little girl goes looking for her mom. The doors are locked and monitored to the outside, and they are heavy, difficult for adults to open. Well, the little girl managed to get outside, walked down the hill approximately a half a city block, then was hit by a car on the busy highway. <gasps> she couldn't have opened that door. Did something open the door? This was in the evening about 8 p.m. Sadly, she died. When they reviewed the camera footage, it looked like the little girl is being walked out by some invisible entity. Were they holding hands or something as they were walking out? Like she was walking with her hand out like she was holding hands? Oh my God. This was January 2022. Another death occurred in the very same spot this past November. A doctor in our community went home to walk her dogs in between shifts at the hospital. She normally walks on the frontage road right next to the highway. Apparently, she had a new puppy and it broke free. When she ran after him, she was hit by a car or small SUV. She and the puppy did not make it. Driver of the car that struck her has not been found to date. Full story in the local newspaper in Millie Lacks Messenger. We, the community members, believe there is a spot the entity is leading children and animals to the same spot on the highway. We don't blame the mother. It was a tragic accident and we didn't think anything of it until the person lost their life in the same spot. I wonder what kind of entity goes after small children and animals specifically and why this spot on the highway? Did someone die in that spot on the highway? As for the little people, when my grandson was little, we would hear him talk to people while playing downstairs of his parents' house. He's now 21 but remembers talking to something but doesn't remember the conversations. 
The little people likes to play tricks on you. They will hide things or move things when feeling mischievous. He did remember that one wanted him to play outside, but his mother stopped him from going out because it was going to be dark soon. That is very sketchy. Playing tricks on you and being mischievous sounds like a, like the Fae or poltergeist or something. I always thought my grandmother told us the story to make us stay in at night, but after the two accidents, I believe there are things out there. And when I can't find something, I say out loud, please bring my blank back or help me find it. And soon after the item I was looking for shows up. So you're speaking with the entity and they're bringing it back. That's giving me fey vibes, but I don't know if the fey would like lead children and animals to a spot to die. What do you guys think that this is? And what are we going to get next? Let's check out the next story. Hi, Auntie Matrix. Hi. Two stories to tell you today. The first one I've never spoken about, as my mother is heavy religious and well considering our relationship, would not be a good idea. Here's the first one. So back when my son was about a year old, Max, I was a single mom living with my family. I've always been sensitive. I sense spirits, etc., empath and dreams and visions. Anyway, my room was basically part of the lounge converted to a bedroom. So one wall was actually a wall unit dividing the lounge and my room. My son shared my room with me, and in our room, I had my queen size bed in the center of the room against the wall and my son's crib right next to my bed. He used to climb out of the crib into my bed and I always slept with my door closed. We also had wooden floors throughout the house. This is key. I battled with insomnia and I have for many years. So one night at about two to three in the morning, I was lying in bed battling to fall asleep. It was so weird because just as I was falling asleep, that space between being awake and asleep, I heard someone walking down the passage. Remember, wooden floors, so you hear everything and everyone was asleep. I assumed it was my brother's. It was very heavy footsteps and he is a very big guy, six foot something. I ignored it and tried to fall asleep. About five minutes later, I hear someone in the lounge behind the wall unit loudly say, Nadine. Oh my God, I hate when something says your name. I was concerned first. Immediately, I said, yes, what's wrong? And no answer. Now this voice saying my name sounded familiar to me, but I couldn't place if it was male or female or where I knew it from. About five minutes later, I again heard the voice. This repeated about four or five times, each time getting angrier. Oh my God, the voice is getting angrier. That's so because they're not answering. No, but she is trying to answer. Maybe they're trying to draw her out of the room. Eventually, around the sixth time, I got annoyed and said, damn it, what do you want from me? Fuck off already. I'm trying to sleep. Well, whatever this was, didn't like what I said. And within seconds, I felt what I can only describe as someone punching me in the back with such force. I flew across my bed and landed on the floor on the other side of my bed. I had a bruise in the center of my back for two weeks. Oh my God, it terrifies me when people get punched or physically impacted by spirits or entities. What did it want though? You were answering it. Why was it so mad? And then it punched you. Second story. So a few years after the first story, my son was now four, my family had moved to a flat in a complex. He battled with what we assumed were night terrors. This is also the period where my son was officially diagnosed with Asperger's. I firmly believe he is also sensitive to some degree. I firmly believe that many people with things like Asperger's, autism, that those people are more sensitive by nature. So my son still slept in my bed as during an episode he would see things crawling on the ceiling and freak out. It got to the point where we were blocking out windows in the room so he could actually sleep as we believed it to be night terrors. Until one night, my mother was asleep in her bed in the other side of the flat and she had a strange dream. She never told us all the details. However, we did find out that it felt like someone was sitting on her and choking her, not only in her dream, but in real life too. That sounds like sleep paralysis to me, a sleep paralysis demon. A few nights after that, my brother, 21 at the time, also with Asperger's and second degree brain damage, woke up freaking out and started pacing the passage at two to three in the morning. When I asked him what was wrong, he said that something woke him up. He can't figure out what, but when he woke up, he saw something that looked almost like a deformed gremlin with a long tail crawl out of the top of his built-in cupboard across the roof and fall onto his bed. It then looked at him and growled loudly and proceeded to run across the bed and crawl out the open window behind his head and disappear. We lived on the second floor. What could that be? And why did it seem scared of him? The growling makes me feel like it's scared of him. It was like running away, going out the window. To this day, I still can't figure out what happened in either story. I still haven't quite figured it out. However, I've 
now made it a rule that if I hear my name called in the middle of the night, I don't answer. Yes, friends, if you hear something, no, you didn't. As for the second story, we haven't experienced it again. Well, it sounds like it got scared and it ran away. I don't know what what entity or weird being, gremlin being with the tail is getting so scared of the people in the house that it's running away and staying away, but I'm glad it didn't come back. Oh my God, at the end of this email, they write, I hope I get to hear you read my story soon as I've tried to send this a few times and it simply disappears. That's weird. Do you think that little gremlin thing doesn't want this story to get out there? I hope it's okay that we read the next story. Let's go. Okay, I'm not going to tell you the title of this one because I don't want to ruin it, but I can already tell by the title that I am going to be terrified. Hi, Auntie. Hi. I'm excited to tell you the story about why dolls are not allowed in my house. I have three daughters and everyone in my family and friends knows not to buy them for my girls. They know if they do, they will go into the garbage can immediately. Oh my God, that is a rule in my house too. I don't have any crazy story behind it, but I just don't like them. They creep me out, man. My oldest daughter got a doll from my grandmother for her second birthday in May of 2013. My grandmother, being extremely frugal, brought her from a local thrift shop as secondhand gifts were her specialty. Never buy a doll from a thrift shop. The baby doll was actually pretty cute. She had a plastic body, blonde hair braided into two pigtails, a cute pink flower print dress, and her eyes were weighted. So when you'd lay her down, her eyes would close. And when you'd sit her up, they'd open. Those dolls are even scarier. I had a PB Herman doll like that when I was a kid. My sister was terrified of it. My daughter was obsessed with her immediately and fascinated with her throughout her birthday party, hardly touching her other gifts. But by the next day, she was literally terrified of the doll and refused to go near it. Get rid of it right now. This alarmed me a little, huh? <laughs> yeah, because I had never seen my daughter scared of something, but I decided to put the doll away atop a large storage cabinet in my house. Flash forward to October 2013, and our new house was finally constructed a couple of miles away, and we packed up our belongings to move in. It would be my husband, our kids, my mother, and our extremely intelligent border collie dog, Jax, all moving into the new house together. I wonder if there's a reason that we're, we're saying that the dog is really smart. Doll ended up in a bin of random toys that was moved into our new house. Why did we not just immediately throw that doll out? If nothing else, because the kid is scared of it, so why keep it in the house? My 11-month-old middle daughter discovered the doll and was immediately obsessed. She would drag the doll all over the house with her and played with it constantly. Did she also get, like, terrified after the first night? One morning, a week after we moved in, before full daylight, my mother got up to get ready for work and went into our living room. I had an extra pack and play crib set up in our living room to put my 11th month old in while vacuuming and cleaning and doing house chores at times. My mom looked over to see my daughter moving around in the crib and she walked over to her. There was nothing in that crib but the doll. The doll was moving around in the crib. My daughter was sleeping in my room with me at the time. The hair on my mom's arms and neck stood on end. She made her lunch in the kitchen and went to work without waking me up. What was extremely disturbed by it all. Well, I'm sorry. First of all, why are we not immediately going to tell the daughter? Immediately. That requires an immediately wake you up. That doll is moving around in that crib. I'm throwing it out. I'm going to burn it immediately. Let's just move on with our day and make our lunch, mom. That morning, I woke up about 8 a.m., fed my daughter breakfast, and then put her in that pack and play to watch a cartoon so I could put some laundry away. I spent all of 10 minutes in my bedroom putting stuff away. I came out to discover that in just 10 minutes, our dog had torn a human-sized hole in that pack and play and took only the doll out and chewed both her arm and her face up. It's important to note that my dog had probably 50 toys in the house that he rarely played with and he was not a chewer whatsoever. He was the most intelligent, well-trained, and behaved dog I've ever had. Yes, because animals know, man. I was so shocked and called my mom to tell her what the dog had done. Oh my God, get that doll out of the house now, she said. She told me about seeing the doll moving that morning. I put the doll in the garbage bin at the curb and she was thankfully never seen again. Thank God it didn't keep coming back. My girls were too young at the time and have no memory of the incident, but they do know that I don't like baby dolls and won't allow them to have them in our house. I've long heard dolls can be vessels for the dead and spirits. And after our experience, it's not something I'll ever invite into my home again. Good idea. Oh my God, that one gave me the creep. Do you think the next one's going to be as scary? Let's go check. Let's go see. Okay, this one looks like it's a glitch in the matrix kind of story. So maybe it won't be terrifying. It'll just be like weird. Hi, Auntie Matrix. Hi. I love your stories and things that are so weird have been happening to me lately. I just had to write in. If you want to send in one of your own stories, by the way, to potentially be used in a video, you can send it to this email address. So I've always had an interest in the paranormal and so does my husband. Fittingly, about 14 years ago, we bought what we now believe to be a haunted house. 
The original owner passed away in the home and it changed hands several times in rapid succession until we purchased it. Okay, so maybe this is not a glitch in the Matrix one. Maybe this is a, a haunted ghost one. Strange events began occurring within a couple of years, starting with our youngest daughter talking to and about grandma who she interacted with in her room. We do not have anybody in our family that we refer to as grandma, so it was strange, but we chalked it up as nothing initially. Soon enough, though, my husband and I both began to experience odd circumstances and seeing and hearing strange things in the house as well. My husband once found all the bathroom cabinet doors open when he had been alone in the house all week while I was gone with the kids and was certain they had been shut the last time he had been in that room. Oh my God, I hate when ghosts open cabinets anywhere. That really freaks me out. I have seen dark shadow people and the figure of a woman in our bedroom. We have both heard our names spoken when nobody else is around and there are the usual unexplained pokes, prods, bangs, and sounds of talking when nobody else is in the house. Definitely haunted, man. Added to these events, Events, lately, I have been experiencing the oddest coincidences on a daily basis that make me kind of question reality. Tonight, however, was straight up next level weird. I left the house this evening to go pick up. You guys are still living in this house. I left the house this evening to go pick up my daughter from a wrestling tournament. My husband was on the phone with his aunt the entire time I was gone and had only gone from the living room to the garage where the workshop is remaining on the call the entire time. When I returned home, there was a slice of pizza, the last slice, in the toaster oven. It was on a timer and was nearly done. I knew I had not put it in there before I left, so I figured that my husband had either put it in there for our daughter or himself while I was gone. So when he got off the phone and came into the house after our return, I asked who it was for. He asked, what pizza? I told him the slice he put in the oven was ready and asked if it was for him because our daughter had specifically gone looking for a slice and was hungry. Again, he was confused, saying he didn't even know that we had any left. He was completely baffled and insisted that he did not put the pizza in the oven as he did not even realize that we had any. Is the spirit in the house like a nice spirit? It was like, oh man, I know this daughter is going to be hungry when she comes home from wrestling. Let's pop a piece of pizza in the oven for her. I figured maybe he had done it on autopilot while on his call and just didn't remember, but he was adamant that he had not. We even went so far as to call his aunt back and ask if she could recall at any point during their conversation if he had talked about pizza or if she had heard sounds of him putting it in the oven. She said she did not. We are stumped and a little freaked out. So what do you think? Was grandma looking out for our hungry girl? Was there a glitch in the matrix or are we just losing it? It sure seems like a lot of strange things are happening more often lately and I'm just not sure what to think. First of all, I was gonna say grandma could not be your grandma or like someone in your family named grandma. My daughter actually used to speak to nobody when she was younger and she called everybody grandpa that she was speaking to. So I think it's just a spirit in the house that she's referring to as grandma for some reason. Maybe they look old. This definitely a to the house because people have been moving in and out of this house, right? But you said because it was haunted. So I'm going to say it's a spirit in the house and maybe it acts as a grandma and it's nice to this little girl and it knew that she was hungry and it heated up a piece of pizza. I thought this was going to be a glitch in the matrix with pizza because it was named pizza glitch, but I was wrong. We are having so many like spirit ghost entity stories today. Let's see what's next. Are we going to get another one or something different? Oh my God. Hi, anti matrix. Hi. I feel like I'm writing to a celebrity. <laughs> maybe one day. So I wanted to share my weird experience with you and see what you and everyone think. So back in the 1900s, my family lived in a brand new house in a brand new suburb. So you'd think that we'd be safe from any paranormal activities, but apparently not. Sometimes things can be attached to the land, not the house. I didn't know it at the time, but my mother was and had been dealing with sporadic paranormal events. From silly things like farting noises in the kitchen. <laughs> what? When baby me and my toddler sister were in bed napping. Wait, you have a farting ghost? <laughs> and my mom would be alone in the kitchen to objects straight up moving on their own and many more I would come to find out years later as a young adult. I was a tiny first or second grader when this happened, but I remember it clear as day. I have no idea why I woke up, but it was early morning, still dark outside. I knew it was morning because the hallway light coming from under my bedroom door. My mom was and still is a teacher and woke up super early in the mornings to get ready. My bedroom door was on the same wall as a large closet with double accordion folding doors that I had left open the night before. My eyes catch something while I'm looking at the light from under my bedroom door. I look over and there are two perfect circles, balls of yellowish slash green light, almost looking like a pair of eyes, but perfectly circular just in the dark of my closet. Nope. No, thank you. I shut my eyes immediately and put my head under the blanket, scared and not knowing what I had looked at. I peeked my eyes back out a few seconds later, hoping the glowing balls would be gone, but they weren't. 
I hid my head one or two more times thinking surely this is my imagination and it will be gone. And each time I'd look back out, they'd still be there. I hid my head one more time and gathered all my courage and bolted out of my bed and to the door, not looking at my closet at all. I threw that bedroom door open so hard and fast my mom came out of the bathroom where she was curling her hair to see what all the commotion was. I sobbed to her that there was something in my closet. She walked me calmly back to my bedroom where we turned on the light and of course nothing but all my clothes and a few random items were on the shelf in there. My mom tried to calm me down by saying maybe light was reflecting off of something in my closet, but there's no way that could be because it was still dark out. So it wasn't light from my window and it couldn't be the hallway light under my bedroom door because my closet was on the same wall next to it. I just tried to shrug it off, but I still think about it all these years later. I'm 31 now, and to this day, I will still make sure my closet door is shut at night, and so is my daughter's. I had one more and final experience with these yellow greenish balls of light again as a teenager, but I'll leave it here for now. Let me know if you'd like to hear it. Yes, we want to hear it. I was just going to ask, did you ever see them again? It didn't sound like you did, but you had another experience as a teenager. I need to know what they are. Something is. And was it in the house? Did it happen again in this house, or did it happen somewhere else? Because that would be very interesting. Something's following you, maybe? What's got yellow green eyes Ooh. but yes of course we want to hear it don't worry guys i have other stories we can hear now let's go to the next one hello anti matrix hi i've been following your account on instagram and some of the things made me feel a lot of things some things just made so much sense and it was creepy i never believed in ghosts or that weird things happening could be paranormally related until something had saved my life not once or twice but a few times it all started when i was little about five or six years old my mom once said that she saw my imaginary friend when I told her we were going to play. She could see ghosts talk to them as if they were real, and I thought that she was crazy the older I got because I never saw anyone. But anyway, as a little child, I thought she was playing along. I can't remember much about that imaginary friend, only that it was a little boy with dark hair. A few years later, when I was about nine years old, I remember being scared of the house that we lived in. I never wanted to play outside, and at night, I would pack things by my bedroom door, like my teddies and so on, to keep it shut. What did you think was going to open your door? I told my mom, and she said I was just being weird because there's nothing there. One night, I woke up because I felt really cold, and my bedroom door was open. My teddies had been moved. Oh my God, cold. It's a sign of a ghost. Normally, when my mom checked up on me, she would have closed the door when she left my room, so I knew it wasn't her. I was looking for my blanket and pillow, but nothing was in my room, not even the fitted sheet I was sleeping in. Everything was gone? Your pillow and blanket and sheets were gone? I went into the living room to see if it wasn't there, and I saw a little boy who looked familiar in the living room staring at the bathroom door. The door was open, and I could see someone in there, and when the boy turned around, I can remember that he looked scared. That moment, I ran to my parents' room and told them someone was in the house. It was like a whirlwind, and everything happened at once. The bathroom light went on, and the door slammed shut. My dad grabbed a baseball bat and rushed to the bathroom. When he opened the door, it was empty, except for my blanket, fitted sheet, and pillows that were placed in the bath like it was on my bed. We moved two weeks later. Oh my God, I have so many chills. What was that? What took all that stuff and put it in the bathroom like a little bed? This little boy right now, by the way, is sounding like maybe a guardian angel or a spirit guide. Let's keep going though. There's more. When I was 13, we lived on a farm. I kept seeing people walking about at night in the fields. And when I told my parents, my dad said it was probably the workers or the animals. I heard something in the spare bedroom and I asked my mom to lock that door. She agreed that the room felt strange. Our house was split in two even sides. Each had two bedrooms and one bathroom. My parents and brothers slept on one end of the house and I slept alone on the other end with the empty spare bedroom. One night we were by the neighbors and I was playing with their daughter who was a year younger than I was. I remember saying that I wanted to grab a jacket and she asked if she could come with me. My parents said that we could go to the house but to remember to switch all the lights off when we left. I wasn't scared of the dark. How weren't you scared of the dark after that first thing? I'm scared of the dark and that didn't even happen to me. So we went through the house in silence. She was scared and held on to me. We got to my room and I switched the small bedside lamp on and grabbed my jacket from my closet while she looked around my room. There was a loud bang in the spare bedroom and I knew that the door was locked. So I peeked out of my door to see if the door was still closed and I saw the boy standing there holding the door closed. He looked at me and shook his head frantically. We bolted out of my bedroom window and ran to our parents. I hope that was on the first floor. They ran towards the house and when we said someone was in there, our dads went rushing in expecting a break in. The only thing that was broken was the door handle and the window latch on the inside of the spare 
bedroom, my mom insisted that we move again. Inside the bedroom, the window latch and the door handle on the inside of the locked bedroom? Thank God this mom is smart enough to keep moving, but what is happening? That boy is definitely following you, and I don't know if this other thing is following you as well or if that was just like two haunted places. But wait, guys, there's more. I saw the boy again a few times afterwards, and I know this is strange, but each time I see him, he's a little older, as if he's my age, but I know that it's him. Okay, or maybe he's showing himself as older and older. He's taking that form to make you feel more comfortable. I moved in with my boyfriend and his parents on a small plot with two homes on it. They live in one and we in the other. My spare bedroom here feels scary at night. During the day, I can breathe in there, but at night I feel sick. The door is always closed and I've seen that boy in my hallway staring at either me or the door. I have cats and dogs. None of them goes into that room at night. Animals, no. My one cat keeps scratching at the door every so often. And when we open the door for her, she freaks out, runs away, and hisses. I wish I could tell you what he was or who he was, but my mom believes him to be my guardian. Yes, that's what I said. I think he's either a spirit guide or a guardian angel. Because when I brought these events up, my mom said that each and every time something strange has happened, she saw the boy near me and never once felt scared for my part. The mom saw the boy too. I have never been scared of him. If you're not feeling scared, you always have to go on your vibes, right? When something weird is happening. So if you're not feeling scared and you're feeling comfortable or you're feeling good feelings, then that's normally a good spirit and it's okay. A friend had come over for our girls game night and I know he sees and hears things. After a few visits with the girls, he asked me who the man that was always around me was. I never told anyone what had happened when I was little and my friend had never met my mom, but he described him on point like the way I always saw him. What do you think he is? Because I want to know. I've tried talking to him when I see him, but he just smiles and goes away. And no, I don't see him every day, just now and then, but I know that he's around. I am sticking with that this is guardian angel or spirit guide, 100%. And I'm also saying that either you keep moving to really terrible houses or something bad is also following you. And I don't know if that's because it's attached to you or someone in your house, or if it's attached to an object or a piece of furniture that you are moving from house to house. But thank God that you have that boy looking out for you, man. I still want to know why your shit was in the bathroom. That's freaking creepy. Do we think the next story is going to be this creepy? Let's see. Hi, Auntie Matrix. Hi. I love your videos. Been watching them for months. I have so many stories of the unexplained things that have happened to me and my family. Here are a few stories involving my ghost cats haunting us. I suppose I should start with my first cat haunting. Trigger warning, it's about losing a pet from a tragic way. So we used to have barn cats when we lived on a farm. I got this gorgeous fluffy orange Tom. We named him Garfield. He was an amazing cat, but he loved hunting mice by the highway we lived next to. One morning as I was waiting for my school bus, I saw him hunting by the road. I shouted at him saying, go back home or you will get hit. Then my school bus showed up. So I left for school and as our school bus driver drove off, we hit a bump or what I thought was a bump. After that, I knew something wasn't right. I came home after school and my father said he had some bad news about Garfield. I just knew that he had passed away. Turns out that my father watched my school bus hit him and he didn't make it. Oh my goodness. That was Friday. We buried him in our garden. Is this going to be a pet cemetery situation? The next day we were home. My mother was looking out the window towards the road and was asking if we were sure that Garfield was dead. There was an orange cat that looked just like him crossing the road right where Garfield was hit, but towards our house coming home. The only other house was down the road quite a way. So it wasn't our neighbor's cat. Not only that, but it went straight over to where we buried Garfield the day before. This cat just sat there as we watched him for a few minutes and then he disappeared in thin air. My mother, brother, and myself all watched this happen right in front of us. Oh my God, that was so the ghost of your little kitty. At the same house, I had one of my friends over for a sleepover. Everything was normal until it was night. My friends started freaking out. Apparently, I had cats following me around all night, but as soon as she would blink, they were gone. We had no cats living in the house at this time. She could describe the markings on each cat. Every cat she described were cats that have previously passed throughout my childhood farm life and we moved a lot. You have all these ghost cats just following you around the house. That is so cool. Why are like animal spirits so much less scary than human spirits? Many years went by without anything weird happening. My partner and myself moved into our first apartment together after shortly living with his mother. We had two cats. One kitten we got together grew up huge. He was up to your knee in height, 
orange with white thumbs. He was more like a dog that we could walk. Maybe it was a Maine Coon. I bet you it was a Maine Coon. Because of his big size, a normal cat litter box wouldn't fit him. We built one out of clear storage bins tied together, plus a smaller one inside because he had the nasty poops. We put this huge litter box in our bathroom. When you use the toilet, you could look straight into the litter box across the room. Many times you would see movement plus a shadow in the litter box like the cat was using it. After quite a while, you'll look into the litter box again and there was no cat ever there. This happened so much, it became normal. At this apartment, if I was in the living room with the two cats sleeping beside me, you would hear a cat knocking stuff off the table, running around the kitchen like a normal kitten with the zoomies. I would check what was knocked down and there was never anything moved. Other times we would take our cats out onto our deck with harnesses on. You would hear a cat meowing in our place, trying to push the mudroom door open to get out to us. You would also see a dark shadow of a cat moving the door, but there was nothing there. One night as we were getting ready for bed, we had our light on just watching videos on our phones. We tried keeping our two cats out of the room due to my partner having allergies. We had our bedroom door closed. We watched this dark gray cat open our bedroom door, walked in like it owned the place, walked past our bed and then popped open our closet door. And this cat walked into the closet and then the door closed behind it. We were just in shock for a few minutes. We finally saw Phantom. Yes, we named him because we always heard or saw movements of him. Until then, we hadn't seen him fully. When we finally went to check our closet, no cat was in there. We eventually moved apartments. We had less hauntings. This is very interesting because in the beginning, you weren't living in this place, right? But you had all your dead cats following you around. And now in the new place that you're living in, you have this giant phantom cat hanging out. What is going on? Why are there so many ghost cats following you? Phantom is the perfect name, by the way. We were looking after my brother-in-law's cat, Twiddles. He's also a huge cat. He is all black with thumbs. After a month of having him, he went back home as my brother-in-law was back home from his trip. I was coming home from work and I noticed what I thought was Twiddles through our apartment in the kitchen area and run into the closet. I just went into our apartment, dropped my stuff off and then came back into the kitchen area. I realized we sent Twiddles home a week ago. I looked everywhere. There was no cat. It was Phantom the ghost cat at it again. Later that year in the wintertime, I would come home at night, the fresh snow on the ground. I would find cat paw prints from my car to the door, but would stop about five feet away from my door. There was nowhere else they would go. I asked my landlord if she brought any cats in from outside and she said she hadn't. I could never figure out where that cat ended up other than it was Phantom. We then moved again to another apartment that we are now living in. We had only had our one cat at this place. We had the litter box in the closet in the hallway, the best place for it. Well, unfortunately, we had to rehome that cat due to some extreme jealousy as I was pregnant. Cat was jealous of the pregnancy? I've never heard of a cat being jealous of a pregnancy. Like I've heard of animals being jealous when a baby is there, but not when someone's pregnant pregnant. That's really weird. So we didn't have a cat for quite a while. You would often hear a cat using the litter box. Why, but why do you still have the litter box if you don't have any cats anymore? A very powerful smell hit you like a cat just went to the bathroom, but there hasn't been a cat or a litter box in our place in months. Okay, so there wasn't a litter box. Since my daughter had been born, we haven't seen Phantom like we used to, but we are in way better place in our lives. We now have three cats. First of all, you have had so many cats in your life. That's crazy. I thought I was crazy over here with five cats. I am so baffled as to why you have all these ghost cats around you. This is really cool, man. Oh, I think this ghost cat wants us to read the next story. Let's check it out. Yes, I know I'm corny. Just go with it. Hi, Andy. Hi. Yes. <laughs> Oh my God, they actually wrote, yes, sing it, girl. Found you a few months ago. I've been a lurking glitch ever since. Hearing of everyone's experiences got my soul's memory flowing and has me realizing more of my superpowers. Little backstory. My dad passed when I was two. Obviously too young to remember him and living with my mom, he didn't get the chance to see me. So there wasn't a chance for that daddy-daughter bonding. After his passing, I ended up being raised by his side of the family, his parents and my grandparents being a time. As a kid, I used to get dreams quite frequently. No big deal. They're dreams and I'm a kid. After about age eight-ish, we'll say that I started to notice my dreams were actually happening in real life. Being young, I didn't know what it was, but still weirded out that I knew something was important. Going through my life, I began to notice sensations like another presence around. Jump to me being pregnant with my son. I'm only 19 at this point and the otherworldly presence increases. I, along with my partner, would hear them walking down the hall into the room. I got to a point where I could say, do you mind? 
You would hear the creaking slash steps of them turning around and walking back out of the room and down the hall. Yes, your words are powerful. Use those words, people. I had friends ask if I had a dog in the house because they could hear someone walking up and down the hallway. One day, my son came screaming out of his room, terrified that the man with the dog wants to play and he didn't want to play man with the dogs you have a man and a dog ghost we got animal ghosts everywhere today after that i said enough and things went quiet though i know that i wasn't alone hop forward many years later i've had another kidlet (laughs) i love that you called it a kidlet moved provinces away and got my own house where yes i've got visitors i've been touched on the back by a cold hand on a still hot summer's day while gardening i would hear someone walking up the stairs even hear the chop 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 slide of someone chopping vegetables hanging of a spoon stirring coffee yes i even got the picture of the ghost as it streaked hopefully i've attached it (gasps) oh there's a picture let's take a look oh my god wait this is the streak what is that a lot of pictures and stuff Things could be other things like lens flares and things like that. But what in the world is this? That is kind of crazy. Have you guys seen anything like this before? Back to the story. It seems the latter activity is always when I have a partner, few or quiet unnoticed signs when single. Now living here, I have a medium come up to me and ask if his dad has passed, which of course I answered he had. She proceeded to tell me that my dad is always with me and wants me to know that he's proud of me. Insert instant tears. What does all this have to do with my dreaming? Yes, that's the best part, for I believe that the universe sends us messages even if we don't notice it. 100%, I 100% agree with that too. This dream shocked me back to realize that I haven't been listening. The dream starts out on a black night in the woods. One of the birch or poplars, there was an unknown source of light that illuminated the trees. The only light to the dream. As I began to walk, my dog joined me, who, yes, was my familiar, has since passed, almost all black shepherd. He began leading me through the woods where he led me to the edge of a field there was a dumpster as we come up to the dumpster my female dog all white shepherd comes up then the dumpster is illuminated by headlights and my body was instantly taken over with true dread anger anxiety and tension then appeared a man that we'll call aaron I know of this man, for I worked with his wife, we'll call her Sarah. He comes out, and I could tell that this is where these sensations are coming from. He raises his shotgun to my male dog and goes to pull the trigger when his wife appears pleading that he didn't need to do this. This I found odd because she was certainly not a submissive person in real life. Tension was so heavy, the fracturing was deep, I could hardly breathe. He then unalived my dog and proceeded to put him in the dumpster. All the while, all I can do is stand here, weighted down by the intensity of this dream. Confused as to this power dynamic I'm trying to understand, I awake. Launching myself from the bed, heart racing, body soaked in sweat, head soaked from tears, screaming out for my dog. Finally, I'm okay, right? No. All day, there was an uneasy feeling in the air, and again, that night, I had the same dream. Knowing what was coming, I tried to dive into what it all meant. Again, I wake up not as heavy, but still ending the same. Over the next couple of weeks, I study this dream and what it could mean. Does that mean that it keeps happening over the next couple of weeks, or you were just thinking about it for the next couple of weeks? I happened to talk to a friend, and she says, oh, did you know Sarah is working back at the old job? I did not, and I asked why, because she left there to go work with her husband running his little company. Apparently, she got caught cheating on her husband, and being that she was working for him, it's likely that they are having a time. What does my dream have to do with this? I dreamed of the downfall of their relationship. I haven't seen her for a couple of years at least, and I don't know him. I went through their relationship issues full on emotionally and physically in a dream. And to that I say, universe, you are funny. All the power in the world and the helpers around me, and I get a dream of people I have no interactions with. This person in their email also wants all the witches and glitches to remember your quirky superpowers. We are not alone. I have plenty more stories to share with you, just not today, but if you wanna keep it going right now, you can check out this video or this playlist.